Thanks for looking in today for collective worship in this month of May. I've got here a candle. It's a big Easter candle, which uh, lots of churches have during this season of Easter. And on the front, there's the Christian cross. And then beneath that, on this candle, there's a bird rising up from the ground. And this bird is the phoenix. In uh, Greek mythology, the bird rises again from the ashes and is constantly reborn. But uh, it's used here to remember uh, the Christian story of Jesus who rose again from the dead. And that's why this candle is very special in churches, because it reminds us of the Easter story of Jesus risen from uh, after the crucifixion. I'll light it for our collective worship. There are lots of uh, signs of hope around us. I'm sure you've seen the rainbow um, signs in windows and uh, hanging uh, on doors. Thank you very much to um, Mabel who uh, sent me this one which is in my study window and which looks really hopeful uh, for people who pass by at the vicarage. Lots of uh, signs of new life all around us, not only with uh, the trees and plants which are growing so well in springtime and um, it's been pointed out that because we human beings are doing much less, we're not travelling so much, we're not using our cars, uh, there are very few flights uh, across the world at the moment and therefore wildlife is having a bit of a holiday time, it's having a break from human beings and so there's a lot of activity out in the fields and in the hedgerows. Talking of the fields, I'm sure if you've been out for a walk, you've seen sheep, many of them in the fields, and probably quite a few lambs, because the lambing season is well underway uh, at the moment. You might say we might call them sheep, but actually there's lots of different breeds of sheep and next time you're out, see if you can pick out the different breeds. You can easily Google them and find out what they are. Around here we have, um, particularly where I live, we have Herdwicks and Jacobs. You see South Downs, those rather squat uh, sheep um, and there are lots of them around Strood and uh, Steep and going up to Langrish and around Petersfield. Great fun to pick out what sort of sheep it is and even write it down or do it on and keep a record on your phone. I made a visit uh, um, over to Bedale School where Bear and his family are looking after the newborn sheep. So ignore the telephone which is ringing and somebody's answering that, which is brilliant. And I made this great visit over to Bedales. Thank you very much to Bear and his family for letting me on with a camera and a chance to see some of the uh, newborn sheep which are being looked after. Look out for the black one, Lily, who is an orphan. She hasn't got any uh, sheep mother to feed her. So... Um, it's necessary for her to be bottle fed and you'll see her in this clip which follows. Cool.
poo's coming out. He's pooing. One of the um, big discussions in uh, science and in the natural world and in religion too is this question, are animals sentient? And all that uh, sentience means is do they feel emotions to some extent just like we do? Can animals be happy? Can they be sad? Do they feel pain? The answer to that question is really important because in this uh, half term we're thinking about respect and we will respect animals a lot more if we believe they feel many of the same things that we do. We'll look after them in farming, we'll care for them properly, we won't treat them harshly if we believe them to be sentient beings. And the answer that's coming back from uh, scientists is that yes animals feel they feel some of the things or perhaps many of the things that we do if they're hurt they suffer if they're made happy they know it and if they're puzzled or confused that registers with them so as we learn about respecting all of God's creation don't forget that really important word sentience which is being answered by farming, uh, farming groups and by governments now as they look at what we do and how we treat animals in uh, farms and how we respond to their needs. So yes, they do feel and they do um, sense pain, suffering, happiness, enjoyment, just like human beings. The more we respect them, the more the world is made into a better place in which all of us can live. We've got some prayers which follow, which I've taken from a small book, uh, and then we're going to follow that with uh, a, a song called Think of a World Without Any Flowers. We often sing it uh, in the school context. It's written by somebody who cared very much for ecology and for the planet's health and it's got a special theme and relevance today. Think of a world without any flowers. First of all, our prayers. The music of God's creatures. Have you heard the choir of all God's creatures, the operatic whale and the slightly off-key buffalo, the timid, squeaky-voiced mouse and the clear caroling of the blackbird? Listen carefully. Listen for the high notes and the low notes, for the solo and the chorus, for the melody and the rhythm, for the songs of love and the songs of war. Listen for the song of all creation in praise of the Creator. Praise the Lord, all blackbirds and all people who sing tunefully. Praise the Lord, all buffalo and all people who bellow loudly. Praise the Lord, all frogs and all people who croak oddly. A Butterfly Prayer I think the butterfly says her prayer by simply fluttering in the air. I think the prayer of the butterfly just dances up to God on high. 